Sternberg. I'm chair of the Young Entrepreneurs Academy of Baton Rouge. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for braving the weather. You are in for an amazing evening. And this, this um, slide shows you the uh, 21 businesses, the brands at the bottom, and the 26 students, high school students, who are launching those companies today. You'll hear from each company. Before we get started, I'd like to invite Dean White, Dean of the Business School, Brad Lambert from LED, and Adam Knapp, CEO of the Chamber, to welcome you. Thanks, Deborah. I, I couldn't be more excited about this event. When Deborah approached me a couple of years ago, you know, I get a lot of new ideas. Uh, we drill a lot of dry holes. This has not been a dry hole. It hasn't found oil, it's found gold. Uh, it, uh, we just couldn't be more proud of the YEA uh, program, its relationship with the College of Business, with my great faculty that have bought into this. Uh, it, it's just been a super experience. So thank you all for being here. But by the way, the E.J. Uso College is named for a great entrepreneur, and this building was funded by uh, several dozen very successful entrepreneurs. So keep that in mind, especially our young adults here who are the uh, participants in the program, to see what's in the future. So I'm gonna turn it over to my good friend, Adam Knapp, uh, president of the Baton Rouge Area Chamber of Commerce, who during my eight years as dean has been a great supporter and a great friend. Thank you, Adam. Dean. Great to have you. Uh, I will be very brief. Uh, to the crowd, uh, we are thrilled to see such a great audience. Uh, our organization, the Baton Rouge Area Chamber, has been uh, the, uh, the partner with YEA to help uh, pull the resources together. It couldn't be done without our CFO, Achilles Williams, who has been a great champion and partner of YEA. I want to just give a shout out to, to Achilles for his great work with the organization. Uh, what we care most about for this organization is that we are asking our community to come with your crazy ideas. Bring those ideas to transform and change our economy uh, and to create great companies while you learn the experience as students of what it means to build amazing enterprises and to see what the free market system works like in our country. And that is the kind of championing we want to have out of our education system uh, and out of this program and what we absolutely love so much. Uh, if you don't know this too about LSU, it is the number one economic driver uh, for the Baton Rouge area. Our universities, Southern, LSU, Baton Rouge Community College, River Parishes Community College, Fran U, we have 53,000 students in Metro Baton Rouge, a region of 840,000 people. And that is why it is so important for us to know that our institutions are connected to our community to help our students stay here after college, uh, to find great careers, to start great companies, and to make a lasting impact on who we are as a community. And it starts with building amazing, great companies. So thank you to the students for all their work all year. Uh, to Deborah uh, and to Sarah and the whole YEA team, we couldn't be more appreciative. Uh, and I'd like to hand the microphone over to my great friend Brad Lambert from Louisiana Economic Development, who is also an important partner to putting this together. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Deborah. It is uh, truly a privilege uh, for me to be here uh, back at my alma mater uh, representing Louisiana Economic Development, the state economic development organization. And we are incredibly proud to be uh, a partner with, with Deborah in this, really this groundbreaking program. And this program to me illustrates something that I talk a lot about in economic development. It's really, it's really about the power of partnership. This is the partnership of government. This is the partnership of Adam and his team at BRAC, who we call our Regional Economic Development Organization. This is the partnership of our higher education institutions uh, here at LSU, all across the state. And then I hope you noticed the logos and the names that were on these screens. Uh, our private sector, you know, it's really, it was a who's who list of, of Baton Rouge business and community leaders. And those folks have said, we believe in you. We believe in programs like this. So I, uh, I just wish all the competitors, uh, good luck tonight 
Again, LED, we're a strong supporter of entrepreneurship, and it's folks like you that are going to help Louisiana own the next generation of entrepreneurship. So good luck to everyone, and thank you very much. Well, it is, it is so nice that Young Entrepreneurs Academy can be on the same screen as LSU, the Chamber, and LED. It is, uh, it is nice to see. For, I want to give a high-level overview of what this Young Entrepreneurs Academy is. We brought it here a couple of years ago. It's an affiliate of a national organization that was founded out of the University of Rochester in New York 15 years ago. And over the 15 years, over 9,000 middle and high school students have launched over 6,000 businesses. The students that are in the program go through what I call a trimester curriculum. They meet here at the College of Business every Wednesday from 5 to 8 p.m. They study under the instruction of Dr. Wiley, a professor here at the College of Business, and Kevin Lyle, a serial entrepreneur, and others. They come up with a business idea, then they work side by side with their mentors, many of whom I see here tonight, and graphic designers as they build out the, the brands that you'll see. Um, some of the graphic designers are here tonight as well. They flesh out a business plan with actual financials. All the investors here this evening have those business plans and have reviewed them. And we're at the launch point. These businesses have been filed with the Secretary of State's office. This is not a simulation. These are actual businesses. So 21 new businesses were filed by high school students in the state of Louisiana this year. That is something to be very proud of. At the, after this, it does not end. It does not end. <laughs> students come back to class, and there are numerous field trips, as well as graduation. When they graduate in April, not only will we have a phen phenomenal speaker at graduation, but they'll also graduate with a certificate in entrepreneurship and three credits. They're eligible for three college credits from the College of Business here at LSU if they choose to enroll at LSU for university. This year we had 67 students apply. These are students from the nine parish greater Baton Rouge area. And we continue to broaden into, um, while we have numerous parishes represented in this class, we have other parishes looking to have students apply next year. From the 67 applicants representing 17 schools, including some homeschool students, we have 29 students in the class and over 100 donors uh, participating. This is not an academy where the students sit and are lectured to. In fact, it's the complete opposite. They learn not only from the instructors, but they learn to stand up and learn how to present themselves. They learn from guest speakers. There are CEO roundtable um, where they meet and interact with CEOs from the region. They're building their network throughout the year. We go on, on field trips to Louisiana Technical Technology Park, to walk-ons, we follow this national curriculum. So when we're learning about franchising, we go to walk-ons so they can see how a franchise is actually built. Takes a team. This could not happen without so many phenomenal partners. LSU, the Baton Rouge Area Chamber, um, LED, obviously, the food, Thank you to Heirloom Cuisine, a terrific partner. We feed the students every night, every Wednesday night, every night at class. They're high school students. If you have or know high school students, they are hungry all the time. So our restaurant partners are critical to our success. So thank you to Heirloom for tonight. And I hope at the break or whenever, if you're hungry, please go have food. And United Way for helping us put this program together. When, when I first launched this, um, obviously, I didn't want to do it by myself. So there are a number of people who are here who are part of our steering committee. Thank you to the steering committee for helping get this off the ground. They're all terrific, tremendous business leaders, education leaders, um, and people who are passionate about entrepreneurship. And our, of course, world-class team. I've mentioned Dr. Wiley and Kevin Lyle, Michael Roth, and our executive director, Sarah Munson. So I'm gonna pass it over to Sarah now to take it from here.
right, are we excited? Are we ready to get started? So let's talk a little bit about how the evening is going to flow. This is what we're here for. Each student business will have two minutes and 15 seconds to pitch their business to the panel. We are all here and get the benefit of hearing that as well. That will be followed by a brief Q&A from the panel. We are on a tight time frame tonight, so we're only taking questions from the panel this evening, not the audience. When all of the presentations have concluded around 7.15, we'll take about a 30 minute break. The panel is going to go off and deliberate on what they've heard. You all are free to mix, mingle. As Deborah said, please enjoy uh, the dinner in the back. We, we do ask when you hear the announcement that we are reconvening to take your seats promptly uh, so that we can get on with the exciting conclusion of the program. The exciting conclusion is that every business will receive some level of seed funding. And so we're going to make those award announcements that the panel has decided upon. What are the seed awards? Those are intended for startup expenses. So YEABR holds those funds for the students for one year. And when they reach the point that they incur the expenses, they may either submit a request to us to pay the vendor directly, or if they've incurred out-of-pocket expenses, we will reimburse them. In addition to the seed awards, the panelists are making a very important decision tonight. They are going to select one business that goes on to represent the Baton Rouge area at the Saunders Pitch Competition in Rochester, New York, where the students then compete for additional funding and scholarship dollars on the national level. So very exciting. So let's get down to business. I would like to introduce our esteemed panel. They have the best seat in the house here up front. We have Jennifer Fowler, President, Strategies by Design. Wave to the audience. <laughs> Danny Montalero, Market President, Regions Bank. Jenny Peters, Founder, Varsity Sports. Hollis Temple III, National Sales Director, Agency Owner, and SEC Legend. <laughs> and Mr. Stevie Toops, President of Turner Industries. Our MC this evening is none other than Julio Malera. Julio is President and CEO of the Greater Baton Rouge Business Report and 225 Magazine. Julia, are you ready to kick us off? All right. Thank you. Well, this is what makes America great, the entrepreneurship spirit. And so we're excited. We've got 21 businesses, and we're going to get down to business. So first up, we have Gregory Field and Elijah Williams. Gregory is a junior at Episcopal School of Baton Rouge. He's a pitcher on the baseball team and enjoys studying physics. He's proficient in the coding languages of Java, C++, C Sharp, and Python. He's the head programmer for the first robotics competition team. Elijah is a sophomore at Baton Rouge Magnet School. He enjoys reading, especially fiction and scientific facts. He hopes to major in mechanical engineering at LSU. Gregory is the founder and CEO, and Elijah is the CFO of Roll Check. Let's hear it up for our first contestants. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gregory. And I'm Elijah Wood. And we're here to talk to you about a problem facing our educational institutions. So it is nearly impossible for anybody to go to school K through 12 and have a perfect record of an attendance. It's just a fact of life. You're going to miss school. And especially now with the recent outbreak of COVID-19, the CDC is recommending that some students miss 14 days for a quarantine period. This affects their academic lives by deteriorating their uh, grades and honestly, are, and it affects students, parents, and uh, the educational institutions as students are taking home lower grades. But what is the solution to this? We propose the Roll Check product. The Roll Check is an innovative solution that combines webcams and speakers in order to stream classroom environments and allow students to participate in classroom discussions through the speakers. And now Elijah will tell you more about our market opportunities. So for our market, there are 22 high schools in the city of Baton Rouge with approximately 22,300 students attending these high schools, which is a potential revenue of $1 million. 
for our target market, we are mainly targeting school administrators so we can tell them about our product and then they install it in different classrooms. For our advertising, we will go to the, the administrators directly and talk to them in person and we'll also have an online website that you look at and buy our product from. So for the cost of one unit for per classroom is we're selling it for $1,000 and it costs $300 for the manufacturer unit, which is a total profit of $700. For, for our investors, we are asking for $3,000 for the materials for our first 10 units and $1,500 for the web services of those 10 units, which is a total of $4,500. And with these $4,500, we can turn this into about an annual gross of around $18,000 a month after the first six months, and annually around $480,000 a year after the first two years. Thank you for your time, and we are Rollcheck, keeping students on the roll. Questions, judges? Okay, so um, how, because as I read y'all's business plan, as I read your business plan, um, part of it was kids that were in a situation where they were sick or, and couldn't go, but then you kind of like left it out there, well, what about the kids that just decide they don't want to go? <laughs> That would be up to the school's discretion to use. Okay. However, they could be applied for both uses. Sell me this against Google Hangout. So the main thing about RollCheck is that it's both software and hardware and that the cameras can be mounted in the classrooms and it uses our own proprietary software that's specifically designed for the classroom environment. There are some problems with Google Hangouts that, allow, uh, that deteriorate the educational experience for it. And so we believe RollCheck is a better product than that. Great job, man. Thank you. In looking at your uh, forecast, I was curious, what percentage of the market do you think you can capture first couple of years? Within the first couple of years, we believe that we can capture around 75 to 80% uh, to of the market in Baton Rouge. However, depending upon if there are other products come to light, and especially with the recentness of the corona or the COVID-19 outbreak, I expect that a lot of new products might come out to try to help solve this problem. So while I've got the mic, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, production? How are you going get, to get these packages produced? So our current plan is to produce these within my house. I've or I have much experience with creating electronics and making uh, uh, soldering joints and stuff like that. I plan to manufacture most of them. However, in the future, we plan to start outsourcing to other people to help in the Baton Rouge area. Let's hear it up for uh, Gregory and Elijah. Thank you. Good, job. Good job. Nice job, son. Good job. I'll take that and put that up. Next up, we have Skylar Stewart. Skylar is a sophomore at uh, Santa Mar High School in the early college option program. She enjoys creating new things from unlikely items such as toothpicks. She plans to study journalism in college and has already completed three college level classes. Skylar is the founder and CEO of Butterfly Free. Let's hear it up for Skylar. Good evening, I am Skylar Stewart, CEO and founder of Butterfly Free. Butterfly Free came along one stressful day when I had essays and tests due in the same day. How many of you guys have been stressed out recently? <laughs> well, Butterfly Free is a solution for this. Butterfly Free is a subscription, monthly subscription service dedicated to stress relief organization and inspiration. Butterfly Free will have a notebook so you can plan out your day, <laughs> face masks so that you can relax, and some other things <laughs> to help you I'm sorry. Okay. 
Butterfly Free will have some add-ons later on in stage two, like the butterfly necklace and essential oils. Butterfly Free is targeted towards young adults and adults, mostly the ones who work in stressful environments like offices. We will sell our product through our website and we will advertise our product through our social media. We have lots of competition, but we're not stressed out about it. <laughs> Our product will be different because we will include things to better connect our audience to our team. We are selling Butterfly Free for $25 per package and we will make about $5 from each package. We are asking today for $1,700 to, <laughs> to go towards our manufacturing of three month supplies and other office materials. Thank you. Quick little question, um, since there is competition in the subscription service, looking at your packet, what do you think you can do to make your products a little bit more unique to Butterfly Free, whether it's logo notebooks or pins? Have you, do you have plans to personalize a little bit so it's very unique to your business? Yes, ma'am. In fact, the journals, we're planning to put our logo on it and make them out of stone pages so that the pages aren't like regular notebook pages. They're made of stone. It's not like, okay, my mom, when she heard that, she thought of the Flintstones. <laughs> it's not like that. It's, <laughs> it's still thin sheets, but how they process it is that it's almost like a plastic. Is that super cool? Yes. <laughs> yes. Plan to market the product. Um, we will get advertisement through word of mouth, we will hopefully be able to sell them at schools, like for big test days, like leap testing and stuff. Other than that, we're gonna use social media. So market research, $25 a month. What happens if I don't have $25? Can I stop and can I restart or you want me to keep going all the time? I think I'm gonna have it so that you can purchase in advance too, oh, okay. so that you can pay for next month ahead of time. That's a much better idea. Maybe a package deal if I subscribe for a year? Yes. Let's hear it up for Skylar. Next up, we have Madison Cooper. Madison is a junior at Dutchtown High School. She has years of experience making jewelry. She loves chemistry and biology. Madison is the founder and CEO of Mosaic Styles. Let's hear it up for Madison. Hi, I'm Madison Cooper, the CEO and founder of Mosaic Styles. I'm gonna start off by telling you a little story about my friend Jordan. She can only wear two pairs of generic hypoallergenic earrings and has personally told me that she wishes she had more variety in her style. This is where Mosaic Styles comes in. We make interchangeable earrings for people with sensitive and non-sensitive ears. This means that the piece that goes into the ear stays the same, while the decorative piece you can change out. In fact, over 50% of women report having sensitive or very sensitive skin, which means we can reach a variety of women all over the United States eventually, but for now Louisiana, specifically in the Ascension Parish. The jewelry industry alone is a $19 billion industry and is in constant growth, which means we'll fit in right perfectly. Our primary selling outlets are Dutchtown High School. I have personally made a few sales, sales there this year and have made some in previous years, but those records were not kept track of. We will also be selling to the flea market where booth rentals are $35 for a weekend, and we'll be selling two weekends a month. Our cogs are $6 for the charm pair, which is the non-tassel pairs in the sets provided to you this evening. 
This means we'll make anywhere from $10 to $15, depending on the market in which we're selling to. Specifically, high schools have a cheaper price since flea markets to accommodate for the different income levels of the specific buyers. We're expected to make $170 per month in profit and roughly $2,000 in the next year. We're asking for $2,500 in order to pay for future materials, the cost of hypoallergenic earrings, some packaging costs so we can limit our, um, our carbon footprint with the cardboard boxes we've provided for you today, and for web development. We already have a domain name purchase, but in order to publish the website, we do have to fund the cost to produce it. A mosaic is a style of painting that is made up of many smaller pieces. Women today can sometimes feel small and like they're missing the piece. We're trying to fill that piece for them, no matter how small it is. Let Mosaic Styles help you find your fit. Thank you, what questions do you have? Just a real quickie. Um, would you think the, your uniqueness is in the hypoallergenic or in the designs of the earrings themselves? I'd say that our specific uniqueness is with not only the interchangeable aspect of our earrings, but specifically the hypoallergenic. For many women, it does require them to go to get a generic stud like my friend Jordan from an actual jeweler store, which can run them a racket. Not only do we provide a cheaper option, but more variety for the future. Madison, I, I, I bought lots of earrings. I've never worn any in my life. And I, I got to tell you, the, the business plan is really cool. I, are, are the markups, I mean, the, the, the cost is like two, but there's some big money to be made here. Yes, sir. Um, I, my only guidance would be I'd like to see the marketing plan. I mean, don't, don't stop yourself just because you're here. I mean, I get it. You got to go to school at the same time. But with the Internet and if you get these mosaics, you get on Instagram, this thing could be, it doesn't just have to be Dutch town. So my 10 cents would be, hey, I'd make the marketing plan. Phase two would be the world or the universe. Go for it. That's good. Thank you so much. Wow, what a nice job. Next up, to keep our flow going, we have Brady St. Martin. Brady's a junior at Catholic High School. He's a musician with experience playing piano, singing with music production. He's a two-time state champion with his high school's varsity tennis team. He's active in student ministry and student council. Brady is the founder and CEO of Zip Draw. Let's hear it up for Brady. Hi, my name is Brady St. Martin, and I'm the CEO and founder of Zip Draw. As a kid, I was always going from place to place, and everywhere I went, I took these drawstring bags with me. All right, raise your hand. Who here has ever used a drawstring bag? And I bet you've had your fair share of troubles. Well, I had my troubles too. I would always break glasses, electronics. I lost important papers. I would lose my marbles. So I started to think, wouldn't everybody love a better bag? Introducing ZipDraw. ZipDraw is a new generation for the drawstring bag. It is designed to keep your items organized and secure. Here is actually a working prototype that I built working with a professor here at LSU. Along the inside fabric of the bag, there are pockets that close with Velcro to keep your items safe and secure. There's even a zipper for fast and easy organization and pads along the strings of the bag to allow the user to wear comfortably for hours at a time. We see that everyone will love ZipDraw. However, our initial target audience will be students from toddlers to young adults. But we also see that professionals and athletes will find value in this bag as well. We will initially be working with schools by putting their school logos on our ZipDraw bags to promote school spirit. However, the online sales channels will be important as well, including Amazon, my Instagram page, and our website. There is a huge market for gym bags. It is currently over a billion dollars a year industry. And the drawstring bag segment is projected to rise to $400 million by 2025. We will be selling these bags for $25 a piece. It costs just over $15 to make one right now, with the, which yields a profit of $10 per unit. To get us going for the first three to six months, 
we will need about $4,600. But with personal and family investments, today I'm requesting an investment of $3,880. Thank you so much for your time. Zip, draw, go. Brady, are you making them yourself or somewhat you have some being made someplace? Uh, no, sir, not yet. That's what I'm going to try to do in the future. Y'all can, can pick it apart. There's even a, uh, an, a regular drawstring bag in there for reference, reference to what a normal one looks like. My uh, cell phone didn't fit in one of those pockets. Is there a cell phone pocket I'm missing? Uh, yes, ma'am. I put a cell phone pocket on the back side. You may see that under my books. Get a smaller cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> you see. I have, a cell, I, have put, I have stuff inside the pockets as well. So, um, so would you, I mean, I have never seen anything uh, that is quite like this. I mean, what, from a perspective of uh, competitors out there, have you seen? There's nothing on the market like this. There's your normal drawstring bags with like Nike, Adidas, and all of them. And they may have like one pocket on the inside, but nothing like this that closes to keep your items secure while you're moving around. Do you plan on outsourcing any of the activity whatsoever? Yes, sir. Which pieces? Uh, hopefully the production of the bag like the itself thing. soon. All right, let's give it up for Brady. Good job, man. Nice job. Good job, sir. Let's see. Next, we have... Kara Eccles. Kara is a freshman at Saint Anna, uh, Santa Mar High School in the Early College Option Program. She's received academic awards for English, Math, and Science. She plans to study law and journalism in college. Kara is the founder and CEO of Pecan Concoctions. Let's hear it up for Kara. Good evening, my name is Kara Eccles and I am the CEO and founder of Pecan Concoctions. Before we begin, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the origins of my company. I was born in Louisiana, but raised in Alabama, and I moved and I lived and I got a little bit homesick. So, as a way for me and my mom to cope with this, we would cook our great grandmother's sweet, creamy, caramel sweet treat that's known to everyone else as pecan candy. And so, as I grew older, I began getting bored with cooking it the tr traditional way. So, I decided to switch things up a bit. I am going to add different shapes as well as different varieties such as pineapple, bourbon, blueberries, even cherries. And we're going to expand the way people look at pecan candy. We already have a couple of markets with Papa's Soul Food, and we're hoping to get into coffee shops such as CeCe's Coffee, in addition to food festivals in some local markets. This is a big industry because in 2018 to 2019, $7.4 billion were spent on, pecan, on candy. That is a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> we'll be selling for a mixed package $4 per bag, and there will be tiny bite-sized pieces of 10 mixed pack, of 10 mixed package. Today, we are asking investors for $2,000 to fund for the first six months, in addition to marketing as well as tools to create this delicious candy. Thank you again, and I hope you'll join me for this sweet ride. Have you uh, met with the LSU Food Incubator about any help with this? Currently, I have not. You, you plan to? Yes, immediately. <laughs> Thank you That's for that. That's a great idea. Tell us a little bit about quality control. Uh, I get worried whenever somebody's doing the cooking in the kitchen and I'm not overseeing it. <laughs> so what do you have to worry about as it relates to local and federal authorities about rules and regs around Currently, right now, since I cook out of my home, I'm a, cottage ha I'm a cottage business, so this is a valid 
going in, I will be making sure that everything is properly sanitized in addition to make sure there's no cross-contamination for people who have nut allergies for, so that they will be, still be able to enjoy the candy. I see one of your main um, ways to distribute the candy is with uh, Ralph's, Ralph's, Walmart. It's pretty tough to get into those to be able to sell a food product. Have you talked to anybody from a grocery retailer to talk about that? Currently, I have not because I'm, I haven't really been positive about researching that, but I'm hoping to look into that a little bit more and get into like smaller businesses such as pharmacies or other places that are owned by private companies instead of major corporations. That'll be one step for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Next, we have uh, Josiah Elair. Uh, Josiah is a junior at East Ascension High School in Early College Option Program. He's a poet and has participated in Slam Camp. He played the lead role of Wolf in the play Wolf vs. Red. He's a certified Adobe Visual Design Specialist and plans to major in graphic design. Josiah is the founder and CEO, uh, and CEO of Alienhead. Let's hear it up for Josiah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Josiah Hilaire, and I'm the CEO and founder of Alienhead, a streetwear brand that wants to encourage people to express their individuality. I call that your inner alien. So ever since I was a kid, I was very crea creative, imaginative. I thought outside the box. However, I felt alienated by others. So I wanted to create a streetwear brand that helped people feel comfortable in their own skin. In fact, this was the original drawing that I drew that has evolved into the Alien Head brand today. Newsflash, we're gonna do streetwear the Alien Head way. So Alien Head customers will be able to purchase our products such as hoodies, joggers, shirts, etc., and the colors they choose so they can express their individuality, their inner alien. Another way we will embrace our inner alien is by establishing a community, an invasion of some sorts, to where other people can embrace their individuality and present it to the world. Our, target, our main target is young human adults. However, we will appeal to all species. <laughs> we have an out of this world streetwear market and the US alone is 80 billion and globally is 175 billion. Uh, for purchasing, we will focus online through the Alien Head website, as well as the app, and perhaps we'll focus on some retail later. So a hoodie will cost $60. We paid $27 for it, giving us a $33 profit margin. Alien Head's uh, phase one plan is to produce 100 hoodies and 100 joggers uh, I have funds from myself, my family, and my friends, in which my total ask is $4,200. Thank you very much, and remember to embrace your inner alien. And we are Alien Head. <laughs> Um, one quick thing is um, I own a screen print shop for a long, long time, and your cost of goods is probably way more than you're going to have to pay. That's one thing that I would advise you. You're probably, what you say a hoodie would cost you is probably three times what it would really cost you if you mm -hmm. scale down and got some things at wholesale. So, you know, the logo's cool. The idea is super cool. You just need to go backwards and try to get your cost down a little bit in my thoughts. Uh, may I, well, we are um, doing a other company called Printful, however, um, because they, of course, they have, they have to make their profit, so we'll go with another company called Printify, which is way more reasonable. You than, need to get your own screen print shop. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yes, ma'am. Let's hear it up with Josiah. Oh, yeah. hey, nice job, son. Good job, man. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Natalie Reyes and Edward Chanks. 
Natalie is a sophomore at Central High School. She participated in her school's show choir and in the talent theater program. She played midfielder on her soccer team, and she plans to study international business in college. Edward is a sophomore at Catholic High School. He's a short distance runner and is a member of his track team. He loves helping others in his community. Together, they are co-founders and CEOs of Beautiful Balance. Let's hear it up for Natalie and Edward. Good evening, my name is Edward Shanks. And my name is Natalie Reyes. We're the founder and co-CEO of Beautiful Balance. So, every day we face struggles with trying to maintain our healthy lifestyle. By a show of hands, how many of you guys had struggled with eating the desserts other than the greens or working out? <laughs> well, whether it's us, our family members, we all tend to struggle with this um, idea. And as being teens, we recognize that young people have added pressures, which is the reason why making a healthy lifestyle change can be an even greater struggle. We have thought of developing a lifestyle app that can specifically target teens will be an important need. Uh, for us, fortunately, for a short story of us, is that we, sorry, <laughs> that we both have uh, had a family member that also experienced obesity, and we wanted to help these people that have also experienced the same things about have low self-esteem, depression, and emotionally overeating. And so this is how Beautiful Balance came about. Beautiful Balance will be an app and a website that will help teens maintain a healthy lifestyle. For example, Beautiful Balance will have a calorie tracker and other goal trackers. Also, Beautiful Balance will have daily motivational videos and daily affirmation um, quotes. And also, Beautiful Balance will have healthy um, recipes and meal plans. Obesity is a problem that cannot wait. We know making bad decisions early in life could have long-term negative impacts on our health. And we know that we need to reduce childhood obesity. Wait, <laughs> reducing childhood obesity is very important. Oh, okay. So Louisiana is 20, wait, okay. The children in Louisiana are 20.8% are obese in Louisiana. Louisiana's children is placed third out of the 50 states of obesity. So that's really a tremendous number and we need to help and assist our children that have obesity and other health problems. That is why teens and young adults are our target audience. And we will use social media to advertise our business to the world. Beautiful Balance will charge $5 monthly. Developing our first version of our app will cost $35,000. Uh, if we gain 600 users in our first year, we will have $36,000, resulting in a profit of $1,000. And we will build a mobile and a web prototype that will cost around $3,000. And we'll have personal and family investments that cost $500. We will also today be asking for $2,500. Thank you for consideration of Beautiful Balance, where healthy living starts now. Uh, great job. I think this is a, a really great idea. Um, talk a little bit about your software development uh, costs and how you came up with those and any ongoing maintenance costs. I know you have the, the initial development costs, but what about ongoing? Well, we don't really have an exact answer from this. We've been looking into it, but we are trying to get an answer further along. So. Would you please help us understand what other apps are out there today that might be somewhat similar to what you're proposing? They have some apps that are like ours, but it's not truly like ours. Their subscription um, price is very high. It's really ridiculous for a health app. And also the health apps, they're very vague. They don't offer a lot of details and they won't really assist teens. It's more. Um, offered to adults than teens and young adults. And um, also, our app is mostly like an all-in-one package app that has so many features that can help, like for meditation, like how he says, like meditation, um, for recipes, food recipes, and also uh, daily affirmations that can help. Uh, like motivate. Help, yeah, motivate. Lord knows we need more motivators on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> Julio does a pretty good job of motivating most of us in this city, but uh, let's see if you can top that. I do like the idea. I think it's going to be a very, very competitive market. There's no right. doubt about it. Um, 
I think the unique, so you look at what's your unique selling proposition. I think you can go after your target market by just owning it. We're right. kids, we started a business, use us, don't use all the old people stuff. <laughs> so I think if you own that, that's your unique differentiator. Yes, sir. And right. I think you've got the opportunity to go ahead and get some market share just because it's yep. kids want to support kids. That's right. So right. That's that would good. be my 10 cents, and I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Nice job. All right, here we go. Next up, we have Kenyon Martin. Kenyon is a senior at Zachary High School. On his varsity football team, he was third, a third-year starter, a two-year state champion, and this year's team captain. He will be attending LSU in the fall where he plans to major in business. He looks forward to a career in business and politics. Kenyon is the founder and CEO of VSIN. Let's hear it up for Kenyon. Everybody loves bacon. We put it on our sandwiches, we eat it alone. We just love bacon. I mean, we can't get enough of it. But the inevitable truth of bacon and eating bacon is that it's not healthy. And we know it's not healthy. Uh, and vegans don't get any. And why, why, why don't the vegans get bacon, you know? Of course, of course, of course, we have a solution for this. My name is Kenyon Martin Jr. I'm the owner of Bison, and we are going to create the food of the future. Our solution to this is mushroom bacon. So we're going to take bacon, mushroom, sorry, and turn it into bacon. So what's mushroom bacon? Once again, we take mushrooms, bake and salt them just like regular bacon, and it tastes pretty close to regular bacon. There's a picture of mushroom bacon on the right, and there's a picture of pork bacon Actually, I'm sorry, super sorry, super sorry. Pork bacon on the right, mushroom bacon on the left. <sighs> okay, so our product's aimed at vegans and health-conscious individuals. And now we're going to talk about making bacon. So there is a $14.2 billion vegan market, and that's a lot of money. There are 1.62 million vegans in the U.S. alone. That's a lot of vegans. And there are 23,000 cardiologists in the U.S. just waiting for you to make the switch. So our process is pretty simple. We're going to grow our mushrooms in a tent in which we can completely control the environment and growing seasons inside of. Um, next, we're going to bake them at the LSU Ag facility using the food incubator. And finally, we're going to ship them to a distribution center, which will fulfill our sales from our online portal slash website. So our competition is Bake Home and Pig Out. Bake Home is from a company in Baton Rouge called Hanley's. They create bacon bits. And Pig Out creates bacon chips. None of them are mushroom bacon and actual mushroom bacon slices. That's our competitive difference. That's our competitive advantage. And now we're going to talk about some cogs. So the estimated cost per pack of bacon is $3.75. And we're going to sell every single pack for $6, meaning that we're going to make a profit of $2.25 per pack of mushroom bacon sold. So for our starter materials, we'll need $3,000 for growing supplies, pretty intensive, um, $1,000 for a tent, $1,000 for marketing, and $1,000 for rent in the near future at the LSU Incubator and Ag Center. $6,000 is needed, $1,000 will be funded from me and myself, and $5,000 is what we're asking from the panel today. Um, let's make some bacon. Uh, great idea. I don't like mushrooms, I, but you know, but that might change. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Um, so you've obviously you should, you had a picture of it, so you've eaten it yourself. Yes, sir. We've made it. Sadly, I don't have any for y'all today, but I promise I will in the future. I'll okay. have some for everybody in the future. Okay. And yes, I have eaten it myself. Yes, okay. Sir. All right. Okay. Tell us about the market research you conducted. So, um. Obviously, it's aimed at vegans and health-conscious individuals, and we found that there are, well, once again, the obesity rates, as we've talked about, as other people have brought up, that's the biggest problem. That's the thing we want to attack, honestly, at, at the heart. But first, we're going to start off with vegans, because there is no good alternative for bacon for vegans. So we're going to aim it at them at first, but hopefully, eventually, eventually, uh, people will catch on, notice how good it tastes, how good it is, and hopefully, it'll become an alternative to real bacon. So... 
everybody who is more health conscious or looking to make a healthier choice slash change for their selves and their diets can switch over, have an alternative. Can you talk a little more specifically about your marketing strategies? Uh, you know, consumer products, you, lots of competition. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to focus on Facebook advertisements since they're so specific. And we're going to target people who are in the niche or looking for a change of lifestyle. So using Facebook advertisements, which I've done in the past, we're going to be able to target those specific people that we want and um, use our money more effectively. Just real quick. Um, your competitors have names like Bacon and Pig Out, which really communicates ports, pork and pigs and bacon. Tell me about your name. Um, Bison's Mushroom Bacon. We want, to get it, we want to get it clear from the start. Does Bison communicate to you? Bison, um, I, I chose the name Bison because it signals power and uh, sounds like Bison, essentially. And it doesn't really communicate that, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> But, 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 the product's going to be called Mushroom Bacon, and that's going to be on the package, and it's going to be clear to everybody that that's what we're selling, that's what we're making, and um, we'll show you. So I'll look into that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Good job. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have uh, Zoraya Gray. Zoraya is a junior at Baton Rouge Magnet High School. She's been involved in gymnastics for over seven years and is currently on our high school team. She plans to study business in college. She enjoys sewing, acting, and singing. Zoraya is the founder and CEO of Zophia. Let's hear it up for Zoraya. Hello, everyone. My name is Zoraya Gray. In the 16 years that I've been on this earth, one thing has become clear. Safe water is something we all take for granted. There are hundreds of communities, communities who don't have access to reliable, safe water. Communities like northern Louisiana, for instance. To make up for this, families buy cases upon cases of plastic water bottles, which can cost a family up to $1,500 annually. I was inspired by this problem, about people who get swept into pollution by natural disasters or political disasters, like piping problems. I understand that the water crisis as a whole is difficult to tackle, but change can start with the individual, and the first step is with Zophir. Zophir is a modular water filter, which means it's easy to use and reuse. Zophir also works with different sized vessels, which means less waste, so you won't have to buy more plastic. You can use the ones you already own. I wanted to start small, to show people's need for Zophir on a regular basis. So our target market will be hikers and survivalists. In the future, Zophir has the potential to expand to water crisis communities. Zophir is priced between the competition. However, we're better because Zophir re reduces plastic introduction into the environment. It is my belief that through continued testing, we will meet and surpass our competition. Marketing materials cost around $41, and with a selling price of $44, we will make an average profit of around $3. Phase one, which includes of the prototype, operations, and production for three months, and marketing materials cost around $6,000, 20% of which will be raised through me, my family, and friends. So today, I'm asking for $4,800. Zophir, the filter you never leave at home. My name is Zariah Gray. Thank you for your time and consideration. Have a good evening and clean drinking. Are you going to be able to patent this, or have you thought about any kind of intellectual property protection of someone just coming along and copying this? I have, and my aunts and my mom will tell you how much they have stressed upon getting a patent. I have been researching it, and I've been trying to find the safest way to go about, just in case anyone has any deceitful thoughts. Do you have a physical prototype for us? I do not have a physical prototype, but I do have a CAD drawing. If you want, I can show you if you want. No, I just wondered if it actually physically existed yet. No. Not yet. So the, the, the life straw and the gated in, both of them. So it's on the comparable parts per million microns. I mean, it's the same type of, of unit. Life straw is very, very unique, very, very narrow market. I assume you're going for a little broader. What's the, the unique proposition? Why would I get that over the gated in or over the life straw? 
So lifestyle, as unique as it, unique as it is, it is really only for the individual. And if I went camping with my family, I don't want to share my straw with them. No offense, I love you all. So with Zofir, you will be able to uh, filter larger quantities of water. And let's say you have just a water bottle at home that you don't really use anymore and you don't want to go buy another filter water bottle, you can just take some water bottles that you have at home, bring Zofir with you, and filter into it. Great answer. <laughs> let's hear it up. Right. Nice job, man. Good job. Thank you. Whew, we got some talent up here, boy. Next, we have Adam Asher. Adam is a junior at Bruley High School. He enjoys sports, having played soccer and football. He plans to major in business management and pursue his entrepreneurship aspirations. He looks forward to traveling as a way to expand his product offerings. Adam is the founder and CEO of IFO. Sir. Hello, my name is Adam Ashore. I'm the founder and CEO of IFA Clothing. As we know, our world has a very bad environmental crisis. But did you know that on average, every year, we as humans throw away 80 pounds of clothing? And that makes up 10% of our, of our waste in our environment. So not only are we just looking to save the environment, but we also plan on dressing the world. So what makes us special is our recycling program. So who in here gets tired of wearing the same piece of clothing? Okay. All right, so that's what we're here for. Instead of throwing it into our waste, you can come back to us for store on online credit in our store to get a brand new piece of clothing. All right. So the online global fashion sales have gone up by, gone up by $350 billion since, or we'll go up $350 billion by 2023. All right, so we have, we have somewhat competitors, but they're not focused on they're not focused on the shirts and clothing, they're focused on the shoes. So basically Rothy's and Allbirds, they're the closest I could find that are similar where you can recycle the shoe shoes and they also use recycled material. All right? Not only not only are we targeted towards teenagers, but we're also targeting towards adults as we're here to also address the world. So we'll be selling not only on our website, but also on Amazon. And then we'll be, we'll be promoting our company on social media, for example, Instagram. All right, so our hoodie pricing is, it's gonna cost us $25 to make, and we're gonna sell for $35, making around $10 per hoodie sold. So for the first six months, we will need, we will need $3,150 from the panelists and this will go into sampling the fabrics and also getting some screen printing products so we can get our costs cheaper. Thank you, and let's all be the lucky ones. Adam, the initial investment would make how many sample units to sell, or is it just enough to make prototypes to go out and take orders? Okay, so basically I plan, I've done the research the last couple of days, I've been looking deeper into it. Um, what we have on here was basically from like Printify, from, the, from like, for example, what we had, but I've also looked at wholesale. So basically our new price to make a hoodie is gonna be $12.80, including getting it shipped here from China. So the sampling, first sample is $30. We plan on sampling five different blends. So that would be around almost $100, including shipping. And the rest of that's going to build the hoodie, shirts, uh, shorts, and joggers, things like that to get onto our market and start promoting on social media. Are you actually taking the clothes that people send you to recycle and you're recycling those into then the clothes that you're selling? Okay, so confused. basically we're not gonna get the clothes and we're gonna like resell on the site, no. With the whole site that we're working with, we talked to them about it and they said if we send it back to them, they will be able to do the same fabric and do it, use it for example like another short or a jogger. So we can turn the shirt fabric into a short or stuff like that. So you only take back your like Our your product. Clothing. Yes, so I would wear I would buy your product, wear it, then send it back to you. Yeah, as a start. And then get a, okay, got yes, ma'am. So how do you target your market audience? So basically, we target market it is going to be off Facebook of the people who are interested into recycling. That's how we're going to start it. So Facebook has like a target thing. So people, so it's more of like young adults. 
So, yeah, aren't to recycling and wanting to help the environment. All right, super. Let's hear it for Adam. Thank you, Good job, sir. Nice job. Next, we have Caroline Sanchez. Caroline is a homeschool sophomore. She's vice president of Beta Club. She's in her second year in the varsity basketball team. She loves reading, dancing, especially hip hop. Caroline is the founder and CEO of Crazy Cajun Confections. Let's hear it up for Caroline. Have you ever been eating a piece of candy and thought, hmm, it's good, but could be better. Maybe a little more interesting. Hi, I'm Caroline, CEO of Crazy Cajun Confections. One evening, I was making pepper jelly, a business that I started when I was 11 with my Mimo, and I made a mistake. I overcooked it and noticed it was hardening. So I poured it on a pan and I let it cool. My family and taste testers helped me realize an idea for a new crazy Cajun candy. Just thinking about traditional candy puts me to sleep. Crazy Cajun Confections will pep up the candy market by manufacturing Bayou Brittle, Jazzy Taffy, and Crawlings, a spicy spin on traditional favorites. The U.S. confectionery market is valued at $34.5 billion. Yes, with a B. Louisiana makes up $486 million of that market. My initial target market, Southeast Louisiana, has over 600,000 people. Wow, that's a lot of customers. My sales channels will be non-price sensitive specialty food stores, farmers markets and craft shows, and online. This past weekend, I attended the Red Stick Farmers Market in downtown Baton Rouge to gain exposure for my products. My products were complimented and well received by everyone who tried them. On average, it will cost me $2 to produce a unit of candy, and my gross profit will be $1.33. I am asking for $5,000. This, with personal and relative investment, will go towards the first six months of supplies and equipment and marketing and operating costs. Thank you for your time and attention. This is Crazy Cajun Confections, taking candy outside the box one spicy step at a time. Let's talk about quality control again. <laughs> okay, so as of right now, I'm producing out of my home, which I can do as I'm selling retail because I'm not in stores yet. But I'm working with a food incubator, so they will help me with their commercial kitchen and getting in stores and with quality ingredients and production. And has Pennington looked at this for you? Sir? Has Pennington looked at this for you? No, sir. Might be a good idea to get them to take a look at it. They yes, may be able sir. to offer some, uh, some way to make a diet. <laughs> yes, we have actually looked at um, low-calorie sweets and things like that. Any other questions, judges? No? Let's hear it up for Caroline. Hi. Nice job. Very nice. Good job. Next, we have Hope Blacks and Brianna Hubbard. Hope is a junior at West Feliciana High School. She's in her second platoon uh, with the... Uh, ROTC. She's a member of the Girls Enrichment Mentorship Services and also a member of Saints Against Destructive Decisions. Brianna is a senior at University View Academy. She's a member of DECA DECA and she's the recipient of the NAACP Aspiring Youth Award. Together they're co-founders of Spread a Little Hope. Let's hear it up for Hope and Brianna. Good evening. We're the co-founders of Spread a Little Hope. This is Brianna, and I am Hope. For our nonprofit organization, Hope stands for Happy Opportunities to Provide Encouragement. Now, kids in foster care, they have it tough. They often feel left out, isolated, or alone, and it's hard for them to find people they trust. They don't usually enjoy the positivity that we take for granted. Sometimes, all they need to make things a little better is some encouragement. Encouragement can come in many simple forms. Imagine you're having a rough time and suddenly a care package shows up with toy <laughs> <My bad. laughs> toys, games, and even a little toothbrush. Or imagine you have the opportunity to meet kids just like you. 
Kids, you can really trust. How happy would that make you? That is the motive behind Spread a Little Hope, happy opportunities to provide encouragement. Now, we hope to work with organizations such as DCFS, Brave Heart Children in Need, and the public library systems. And for our care packages, we tend to put items such as journals, books, board games, simple things that kids enjoy. For our hangouts, we plan to have them in public libraries, in public parks, attend, uh, based, around, uh, based around activities that are fun. With volunteer labor keeping the cost down, we estimate that each care package will cost around $7. Now, we tend to make 100 care packages and have materials for our hangouts, and that'll be around $1,500. With personal funds from family and friends, we will have $400, and that will leave us with a total of $1,100. Thank you for your consideration and helping us spread a little hope. <laughs> Where would you like to see this business in the next five years? What should it look like in your dreams? Um, I don't want to be a dramatic and say nationwide, but we want to reach the whole Louisiana, not just East Baton Rouge Parish and the neighboring parishes, mm -hmm. but North Baton Rouge Parish and whole Louisiana. I love your logo. It's really well done. Did y'all have a hand in that? We did, but mm -hmm. it was our ideas. Yes, and they, they just are. made it made it a little prettier. That, it, it looks great. Um, you're not asking us for a whole lot of money. How do you want to see funding continue? I think it's only $1,100. We plan to have donations from my local school, her, program, her school program, and around my local town because um, I would say well-known around my town. So I have a lot of um, supporters and just through donations through our website that we're planning on to create. There's probably a lot of Especially working with organizations such as DACFS, we're trying to get into them and the Braveheart Children in Need. That'll put us on a big platform. Brands and sponsorship. Very nice to have done. Share it up for Hope and Brianna. Great job. Great job. You did a great job. Next up, we have Amaya uh, Ayo. Amaya is a junior at Bruley High School. She represented her school at the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Conference last summer. She's a third year Peter Tudor and part of the National Educators Rising Class. She's, interest, she's interested in majoring in business and education at Trinity University. Amaya is the founder and CEO of My Professional Future. Let's hear it up for Amaya. Good evening. My name is Amaya Ayo, and I'm the CEO and founder of My Professional Future. My story starts last summer when I got my very first callback interview for the infamous Chick-fil-A. I was nervous, excited, and scared, and in the midst of it, I was bothering my mom, and I was like, what do I wear? What do I say? What do I expect them to ask me? And how do I even respond to what they ask me? And I could tell she got a tad bit annoyed with me, and she said, shouldn't they be teaching you things like this in school? And that got me thinking. So by a show of hands, how many of you have ever felt even the slightest bit of unprepared for an interview? This goes to show that high school does a great job preparing you academically, but lack in real world readiness. And that's where My Professional Future closes the gap. My Professional Future is a real world readiness course for high school juniors and seniors to help them with the needed things in life, financial literacy, interview preparedness, and even the simple application process. So how we work. My Professional Future will provide a curriculum to wanting schools along with the website and the way we will generate revenue will be through advertisements from businesses who are invested in children's futures. There's a real demand for this. Through K-12 Inc. it shows that over 95% of people believe that high schoolers should be getting more real world readiness. Even with interest from an already school in East Baton Rouge Parish and one set by the Louisiana 2018 Teacher of the Year, that if everything around us is growing and changing, we should adapt and teach our students what they need. Projected cost, it will take a total of $1,900 to build a fully functioning website, pay for a, a course creator, and a consultant. Today I'm asking you all for $1,700 with $200 from personal and family investment. 
Thank you. Please invest in your children's future so no child has to learn the hard way. And if anyone is interested in speaking with me after this, please feel free to do so. Thank you. I've been dying to ask you. One of the things you need is you'll be providing information that's not available on Google. Correct. I thought everything was on Google. What is not available on Google that, right. that you can provide to these kids in, the, in this, what we all refer to kind of as a soft skills market? So I want to have it to where each student can choose their own pathway, where if they want to go to a job after they graduate high school or just go to college, then I will call local colleges and colleges around the country and ask them on tips and information on what they look for in applicants and uh, the same thing with the jobs and what they look for in their workers and have that on the website so that each student can prepare for proper interviews and everything that they need so they can be successful in the future. Neat concept, Amaya, it's really neat. Thank you. Great concept. Uh, tell me about your competitors that are in the marketplace today. As of now, I know my school offers something called Court Quest for Success, but it's for freshmen and they don't have financial literacy and interview preparedness. So I will bring in all of the total concepts that each person needs to have a successful future. Let's hear it up for Amaya. Great job. You did a good job. Nice. Next we have uh, Lael Shaw and Tyrone Lucas. Lael's a junior at University Lab School. He enjoys playing basketball and is a co-founder of the UHI Coding Club. He enjoys studying math and chemistry. He's a two-year letter and four-year member of his varsity golf team. Tyrone is a senior at Zachary High School. He's also the founder and CEO of Thai Digital Photography. He's a varsity triple jumper and has played piano for nine years. We got renaissance men here. He plans to study medicine and specialize in cardiology. Lael is the founder and CEO and Tyrone is the CFO of Shank Golf. Let's hear it up for these two guys. Good evening, my name is Leo Shaw. And my name is Tyrone Lucas. Our business is Shank Golf. So the problem we want to address is the old golf. The old golf is boring, unappealing to modern players, lacks excitement, and full of outdated traditions and expectations. The, uh, the inspiration for this idea came when I was a freshman. A teammate of mine had made a sign that hung from his bag that said, for sale, golf sucks. I distinctly remember laughing at my teammates, and when we traveled to um, matches and tournaments, that for sale sign would gain traction between the players and coaches. So as we look at the game of golf, there has been a lack of youth participation in the game of golf, with only 12% of those athletes being between the ages of 6 and 17, and only 30% of those actually go on to become lifetime golfers. Us at Shank Golf believe that we can make the number higher, and we want to transform the old golf into the new golf. We, essentially, we are building a brand to make golf more fun and edgy by selling customizable golf head covers and customizable golf gloves. Uh, in phase one, Shankoff wants to sell to two distinct markets. We want to sell to golf corporate events who want to give their participants mineral golf accessories, and we want to sell to golfers who are otherwise put off by the old golf and want more personality in their golf game. Oh, uh, according to Allied Market Research, in 2016, the global golf equipment market was at $8.2 billion, and it's projected in 2023 to be $9.7 billion. And this is a snapshot of the website that I'm currently uh, building, and we will also use this to generate sales as well as going to uh, actual tournaments, golf tournaments, as well as advertising on social media platforms. These are our competitions. Because we are building a brand, we do consider Adidas and Nike, also FootJoy, to be competitions. But the difference between us and the, and the rest of these companies is we want to make a personal connection with our co uh, customers and allow them to personalize each one of their things that they offer. I mean, things that we buy or sell, excuse me. <laughs> and Shankoff wants, is dividing our business plan in two distinct uh, phases. In phase one, we are selling golf gloves and head covers, and we're selling to golf corporate events. After three months, we will take a step back, evaluate our market, and then go on to develop a full-scale brand. For example, we are selling a pair of golf gloves for $12. Our cost will be just under $4, and that makes our profit just over $8. So for the first three months, it'll cost us around $1,600, and today we're asking the panel for $1,280 for inventory as well as marketing. Thank you for listening to us, and we hope you invest.
Are you actually manufacturing a product, or are you taking a already made product and putting your you know, logo or you know words on it? We are manufacturing the product. We are outsourcing the manufacturing, but it's our um, brand. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about your manufacturing and your supply chain? Um, well, we are outsourcing that. Um, we are uh, using their seed money for phase one, and then we are going that we're going to supply our um, products, and then we're uh, developing a full scale brand. Thanks. How do you plan to differentiate your product from all the other unique swag dealers there are? Well, we want to specify this towards golf. When we look at golf, it's pretty much just, you know, a nice little polo or some, some bland um, shorts or something. But we want to make it to where it's more fun, something to make people look at golf and be like, hey, I can actually go do that. Hey, that's pretty fun. That looks cool. Something to make golf kind of give that sense of individuality and fun. Have you run into any pushback from golf stuff manufacturers who were saying, wait, 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 <clears throat> I don't want to belittle what I'm doing. I don't want to, I mean, I love the straight out of bounds deal, right? And I love mm -hmm. the shirt. I hate golf. I hate golf. I hate golf. Oh, I love getting a nice shot. I hate golf. I think that's a really great idea. But to me, I'm not a golfer. The hardcore golfers would be like, well, can't make that shirt. Mm -hmm. Have you run into that at all? Well, overall, we're selling to the golfers that were otherwise put up by the old golf. So people would not be, people that want to get into golf or were not um, very, were not very much um, like perceived by golf and like wanted to do it, uh, this is the brand that we would choose. So you're to. ignoring them. I think it's great. Okay, yes, perfect. Sir. <laughs> Let's hear it up for these guys. Thank you. Good job, Eric. Good job, Leo. Good job. Next, we have Michael Malone. Michael is a sophomore at Dutchtown High School. He's a member of the Dutchtown Climbing Group. He's learning to play piano and enjoys singing in the shower. Come on. Michael is founder and CEO of Indie Play. Let's hear it up for Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Malone, and I'm the founder of Indie Play. OK, so games. I love playing games. My mom can tell you. The app stores currently are dominated by big companies, and that makes it hard for the little guys, which are independent gamers or indie, indie developers, sorry. So the gaming industry is very large. Currently, it's a $180, $180 billion industry, and gaming takes up, mobile gaming takes up 59% of that industry, which is $106 billion, and that's a lot of money. So, with all that pie, why is it so hard for independent get developers to get a piece of it? That's where Indie Play comes in. Indie Play will bring independent game developers and gamers together on one platform app that will be a subscription-based app, and you get all the games that's on it when you pay your subscription. And we'll advertise this on social media sites and gaming forums. And the, pro the cost to develop the app is $10,000. And with the other costs, such as payment processors and marketing, my estimated cost for one year is $19,000 and $600. And I'm asking you guys for $5,000 tonight to put into marketing and a crowdfunding site on Indiegogo, which I chose instead of Kickstarter, which is more popular to more people, because Kickstarter, once you set your goal, you have to meet that goal or you can't keep any of the money. And on Indiegogo, you can keep anything you make. Thank you. So how will you market it to um, indie developers? Okay, yeah, so I need two marketing strategies because I have to market to both the gamers and the developers. Wow. So I've reached out to a couple developers on things like Instagram and Twitter, and I'm thinking that if I can create the app and show it to them, and I can, they have been very receiving of it. They think it's a good idea, wow. and I still need to talk to them more and iron out some things. But the indie game community is very niche, so people talk to people. So if I can get a couple, they'll talk to their friends who are also independent de developers and they'll tell them Good. about my thing. And so, so nothing like this exists right now then? Um, well, not for independent developers. Right. There is Apple Arcade, which is a subscription-based app store. 
uh, the independent of the app store. So you pay five dollars and you receive a bunch of apps that they have on there. But this is different because it's more personal to independent people and not big companies. Perhaps I'm confused. Help me understand how your product is differentiated from your competition. Okay, so the apps on the Apple Arcade, which is what they call it, are all made by big corporations. So like Ubisoft, uh, I'm trying to think of some more, uh, Epic Games, uh, they dominate that place and they have marketing teams, they have multiple people developing the app, they have multiple people researching how to best market it and all these things. And my app is for a single person who's making a single game. This is their life, this is their whole thing. They don't have really a bunch of people helping them with this, a bunch of people helping with them. They sit down, they make it, and this is for those people. If you need further tutorials. They'll give you a, cons a you know, consultation, uh, 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 Tom. Thank you, let's hear it up Thank for you. Michael. Thank you. I need my clicker, my clicker, Michael. Thank you. I know you used to playing games, but give me that clicker back. <clears throat> Next up, we have Thomas O'Connor. Thomas is a freshman at Episcopal School of Baton Rouge and is a recipient of the Trustee Scholarship. He received the Performing Arts Award for his portrayal of Mr. Banks and Mary Poppins. He won first place in the Mu Alpha Theta Math Bowl and is an avid math tutor. Thomas is the founder and CEO of Face Tutor. Let's hear it up for Thomas. Come on, everyone. Hi, I'm Thomas O'Connor, founder and CEO of FaceTutor. Have you ever been up late at night banging your head against the wall because you can't figure out the last problem on your math homework? She has. What if she could get the help she needs from a pool of quality tutors on demand? What would that be worth to her? And on the other side, what if that same pool of experts and educators were just waiting for an opportunity to make a few bucks on the side? Well, that's FaceTutor. It combines mobile, video, and voice technology with collaboration tools, allowing tutors to help students on demand. We all know, we all know educators are undercompensated, so providing them with a side hustle where they can utilize their true expertise allows tutors from any geographies to help students wherever they may be. And the service they provide is truly in demand. I can tell you from personal experience. We, there are three components to face tutor. The 24 seven access, which allows students to get the help they need whenever it's convenient for them. The video chat functionality, which allows for more effective communication than through text-based services like the ones currently on the market. And the session notes, which allows students to review what they've learned for upcoming quizzes and assessments. We charge $45 for a one hour session of face tutor from which we make $20. But we are considering incorporating a surge pricing model based on supply and demand. Maybe we'll increase the price just a little bit around exam time. Over eight years, there's a projected 50% increase in the e-learning market, which shows the huge potential for FaceTutor. So I need $10,000 for our first three months of operation at FaceTutor. I can get $5,000 from family, friends, and my own personal savings. So I'm asking the panel for $5,000 to cover the other half of that. Thank you, and please consider joining us in tutoring for your future. Absolutely stunning idea. Tell us about your marketing plan. Who exactly are you marketing to? I'm marketing to middle and high school students, um, and I'm also marketing to teachers uh, who would teach on my service. My plan is to go to high schools and middle schools and ask the administrators, the principals, uh, counselors, if they have any teachers who would be willing to work on my service and also uh, inform them that um, if their students need help, they can use my service. You, you should knock it out the park. This is a wonderful idea. You need to be marketing to the parents where they've got the money. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, Thomas, so the, 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 the tutors can actually sign in and sign out like an Uber driver. Yes, sir. Um, the tutors will uh, log on uh, and they will say, okay, I'm here. Yeah. And uh, then the student will be able to find them on the app. How many tutors do you need to get up and run it? 
In other words, to, to, to be, have this marketable to start selling to kids or to parents, and I agree with Danny to sell with parents, do you need five tutors or 75 um, tutors? Uh, our, at launch, we're hoping to have about 10 tutors. I've already spoken to um, multiple prospect, prospective tutors in multiple different subjects from multiple different schools. Let, let me ask you a real quickie. What happens at two in the morning when I need a tutor? So the idea of face tutor is that uh, we will have students, uh, maybe it's two, it's 2 a.m. for them and they need, really need help. And we have a tutor and it's um, 10 p.m. for them and they uh, just put their kids to sleep and they're like, well, I'm not tired yet. I have nothing to do. How about I make a little money? So they will go on face tutor and they will log in and they can help a student for an hour um, with their service because of the time zone. So a student who's awake at 2 a.m. who needs help will get help from a teacher who's awake at uh, 10 p.m. Quickie, quick, quickie, quickie. All of hers are quickies, but I'm just gonna say that's okay. Uh, what baseline like system are you using? Is this like Zoom or, or y'all gonna create it in yourself or what? Um, yes, I'm gonna be using Adalo uh, for app development, okay. uh, which will allow me to use already coded apps and personalize them for my business. And the service for the FaceTime and uh, all of that will be through Zoom. Okay, gotcha. Let's hear it up for Thomas. Thank you. Nice job, son. Good job. Next up, we have Aaron Fleming and Bailey Hyatt. Aaron is a senior at East Ascension High School. She's president of the, the uh, Cooperative Office Education. She's placed first in job interview for FBLA uh, qualifying for state, and she'll be attending LSU in the fall, where she plans to study accounting and business. She currently works at Shell Chemical Plant in Geismer. Bailey is a senior at Runnels. She's played the piano for six years, having played soccer since kindergarten. She is a six-year member of her varsity soccer team and is now a starting defender. She'll be attending LSU in the fall. Erin is the founder and CEO, and Bailey is the founder and COO of Chem 3D. Let's hear it up for Erin and Bailey. Hi, my name is Bailey Hyatt. And I'm Erin Fleming. And we are the co-founders of Kim 3D. While working at Shell, I've seen many chemists struggle with proper labeling on packages. They page through these huge books, books bigger than the phone book, and it's very hard to get the labeling correct. And if they get, fine, when, if they get it wrong, they can be fined by the Department of Transportation, DOT. So I thought to myself, and the fines range from $25,000 on up. So I thought to myself, there must be a better way. And that's where Chem3D comes in. Chem3D is a software that allows chemists to find the proper labeling and placement for the chemicals that they're trying to transport. We're allowing chemists to skip the step of flipping through these huge reference books to find the information they need, and we're saving plants time, money, and avoiding safety hazards. And now Erin's gonna talk on just a few more benefits of using our software. It just makes good business sense for these companies to use Chem3D. Using Chem 3D for just one fine will eliminate the cost of being fined. There's many companies in the United States that can use a solution like this. And now Bailey's gonna to touch on our first year of finances. So within our first year of business, we'll be spending $25,000 between marketing and prototype costs, but with three paid clients paying $1,000 a month, that means we're bringing in $36,000 and profiting $11,000 just in our first year of business. For our first phase of Chem 3D, we want to create a wireframe and a website, which cost about $6,000. And after our personal investment, we plan to ask the investor panel tonight for just $3,000. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. So obviously you all are talking about big chemical companies, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so of course, you, you currently are working in one now. Have you got any conversation to find out if this is something that would even be considered? Yes, sir. Um, I have talked with two chemists at, our, um, at Shell right now, and they said that this is a good idea. And also, I've talked with my dad. He's a chemist as well. And he said that they don't, really don't have a solution like for this, so it would be a good idea. One question I always ask businesses is what need are you solving? So obviously this uh, has very uh, serious implications 
for the firms that are using it. Tell me, there's no other competitors out there that have an online service for this? There's an online service that's similar to it, but it's not like Chem3D. Chem3D is going to show a 3D version of um, your box and where to place the labels, so that's what makes us unique. And right now, the process that they're using is using this, flipping through this huge book. So basically is what we're doing is digitizing this book so they can do it faster. Tell us about the market potential. The market potential, so right now we plan to go into plants such as BASF and um, Methanex to advertise and basically show what Chem3D is about. So that's our biggest market right now. Let's hear it up for Aaron and Billy. Hey. Great job, great job. Good job. Super. Next we have uh, Braylon Selman. Braylon is a senior at Madison Preparatory Academy. He's a sergeant at arms in the Louisiana Leadership Institute. He's a participant in the Rainbow Push Coalition National Oracle uh, Contest. And he's a volunteer at, at Fortis College and Mr. United States Organization. Braylon is the founder and CEO of Brushed by Bray. Let's hear it up for Braylon. Good evening. Can anyone tell me what's wrong with this picture? You know what, don't worry about it. We don't have time for all that. I'm going to tell you exactly what's wrong. He doesn't have on customized shoes like these. <laughs> Hi, I'm Braylon Selman, CEO and founder of Brush by Bray. And here at Brush by Bray, we're giving individuals the opportunity, opportunity to freely express themselves through customized shoes. Not only that, we also offer a cleaning service for shoes. We take new shoes, old shoes, raggedy shoes, or dirty shoes, and turn them into something completely new, such as this. Um, so my first steps into this industry was with a 10-minute YouTube video and a pair of my own shoes. I currently own this business, and I'm marketing on social media like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Brush by Bray. In this industry, as in, as in, in 2016, my industry was worth $60 billion. Over the next years, in 2024, my industry will be worth $92 billion. Backed by Goldstein Research, experts, says, experts say that consumers are favoring customized goods due to the uniqueness and style that the shoes provide. Uh, I'm currently targeting ages 18 to 35, but I feel my product is for anyone and everyone. Like I said before, I'm already um, selling on social media. I'm looking forward to selling on third-party sites such as Big Cartel and Shopify and eventually my own website. So as of right now, prices range. Um, the highest is $225 and $115 goes into making a product, which leaves me at a growth profit of $110. Today I'm asking investors for $5,000 this will cover branding, marketing, production equipment, labor, and executive costs and investments near the future. Also, I have a um, gift for one of the panelists. By the way, all panelists get a sketch of a, a future shoe, but for right now, I have one shoe today for Miss Jenny Peters. Whoop, whoop, whoop! Whoa! Nice move. Hold, hold on, hold on. Any questions? Questions, judges? Braylon, so you do the artwork yourself? Yes, sir. How do you scale up? Can you find another Braylon? Is there a unique type of art Almost or any diff. kind of art or work? Um, any type of art. It's, it's all about teaching, um, starting off with the basic fundamentals of art, and therefore, after that, I can just run you along the course of just getting better and so forth. So you create another Braylon if you want to expand. Most deaf. Most deaf. <laughs> 
I had a quick little question. I noticed that a part of your business was going to be cleaning and repairing shoes. Yes, ma'am. And I thought, you've got such talent. Do you really need that part of it? Oh, yes, ma'am. It's a million shoes out there every day. We have a shoe dirty every day. I mean, it's, I mean, why not? Why not? Why not? I know in your business plan you say you'll be working out of your garage for now. Do you plan on doing a brick and mortar at some point, or will you will you ship things back and forth? Oh yes, ma'am. I currently ship. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Let's hear it up for Braylon. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Up next we have uh, Stefik. Rainey. Stefik is a junior at Catholic High. He won first place in the statewide LS, LASC current events contest. He attended the National Student Leadership Conference in Seattle last summer. He enjoys running, volunteering, and learning about the environment. Stefik is the founder and CEO of Envy. Let's hear it up for Stefik. Good evening. I'm going to start out with a little question. By show of hands, how many of you have used one of these products recently? You see, these are called single-use plastics, and each year, trillions of them are produced. This plastic creates a lot of waste, and in fact, every year, over 8 million tons of plastics enter the oceans alone. To put that into perspective, that is the equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic being dumped into the oceans every minute, forever. Not only does this plastic destroy ecosystems, but it kills millions of animals and takes the lives of over 400,000 people. But don't worry. Together, we can stop this. I'm Stefan Graney, and I'm the founder and CEO of Envy, the solution to pollution. Envy is a revolutionary new product that will help you dramatically reduce your plastic consumption and waste. Though it may look like an ordinary water bottle, it's much more. It's a planet-saving device. Our patent-pending design consists of a reusable straw, spork, and bag housed inside of a compartment in the bottom of your bottle. With your reusable straw, spork, and bag, you'll be prepared to say no to plastics in any situation. It will cost $10 landed to manufacture an Envy bottle and it will retail for $49.95. Our startup costs are split up into two phases. Phase one will allow us to get to the crowdfunding stage, and phase two will allow us to begin production. Today we're seeking $5,000 to fully fund phase one, and we hope to fund phase two with a crowdfunding campaign. So, with Envy, we might just be able to save the world. We choose to reuse. Will you? Tell us about your marketing plan. So, Envy is a product designed for anyone, but we plan to market uh, on social media and on our website through our crowdfunding campaigns, and we hope to market to people that are uh, eco-conscious on social media or existing reusable or water bottle users. What is this thing? So that's the bag. You can actually unfold it and it will be a full-size bag. Have you tested the, uh, the pricing yet, that $49.95? So that's, I found that to be comparable to many other reusable water bottles. However, well, they even range from prices from $15 all the way up to 60 or more. And they're just water bottles. They don't contain all the uh, components that mine does. $10 to make the whole thing? Yes, so we hope to secure a manufacturer overseas, and that would help us get our price down. If you can name it the college, you got an investor. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, it's not a thermosy kind of thing, right? It, well, does, it does it. The, that one is a prototype, so it's made of plastic, but the real one will be double wall insulated stainless steel. 
So no bricks and mortar, everything's online, drop ship it to the people. Yes, so we hope to start out selling on our website, direct to consumer, as well as on Amazon, and then maybe we can expand to retail stores. Really cool idea. All right, let's move it up. Nice job, son. Good job. Thank you. Hey, boom. You can invest in that. Next, we have Kayla Carter. Kayla is a sophomore at Scotlandville Magnet High School. She's an honor student and an, also an active member of uh, DECA. She enjoys drawing and crafts. She's been cooking since she was 10 years old. Kayla is the founder and CEO of Kay's Creations. Let's hear it up for Kayla. Hello, my name is Kayla Carter and I'm the founder and CEO of a home-based business called Kay's Creations. This all started when I found a love for cooking in the kitchen when I was 10 years old with my mom on my step stool. And by the age of 10, I baked my first pound cake with my great grandmother. And by the age of 13, I started what is now Kay's Creations. By a show of hands, who all in here loves cake? So I'm talking to the right people. <laughs> Case Creations is an opportunity for customers to get good quality cake at a, with a creative touch. Now, might I add, the cake is really good. And don't just take it from me. Take it from my one-year-old cousin that had a Case Creations cake at her first birthday party. Case Creations doesn't just sell cakes. We sell cupcakes, gourmet apples, and chocolate-covered strawberries. The advantages of shopping with Case Creations is we deliver, we have a variety of sweets you can choose from, and we do sweet tables for any occasion that you might have. You can reach Case Creations at, on Facebook, Instagram, and soon a website. Case Creations is amazing, and don't just take it from me. Take it from my happy customers that think I'm amazing as well. <laughs> One vanilla, uh, well, any flavor cake that you might like, it starts at $80, and that includes a sprinkle mix, a filling of your choice, a chocolate drip, and a topper for any occasion you're getting the cake from. For the next phase of case creations, we will need a proofer that is $3,000, a conventional oven that is also $3,000, and that puts it as a total as at $6,000. I will be making a personal investment of $1,000, so I'm asking the panelists for $5,000. Hungry yet? <laughs> Thank you. And shop with me so you can encounter love at first bite. Um, so, scaling it, growing it, okay? If everybody is not as creative as you, um, how do you plan on being able to grow it so it can become more than just a one woman business? I really don't have the answer for that question. <laughs> well, how many cakes can you make in a week? Or how, I mean, how do you think of it, of how, how you'll be able to handle, I mean, if you really take this thing to the next level, how are you gonna handle it? Well, with the conventional oven, I'll be able to bake multiple cakes at one time, but with the oven that I have now at home, I'll only be able to make um, one cake at a time but multiple in a week, maybe like at least three or four in a week. Do you feel like your big advantage is your creativity? You um, I think it's my passion because it's a lot of bakers that um, are very creative with their cakes, but we can make the same cake and it tastes different. So I think you can taste my passion in every bite that you take All into right. my cake. <laughs> Would you review with the group one more time the use of proceeds for what you're asking? What, how much is going to the website and how much is new equipment? And then the second question is, are you buying new or used equipment? 
I'm buying new equipment, and the proofer is $3,000, and the conventional oven is also $3,000. I have, I think I'm going to make um, my own website, so I won't really need money for the website, but for the conventional oven, the proofer, which would be a big help for case creations, th those are $3,000 a piece. Shut up for Caleb. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> Last but certainly not least is uh, Clayton Rashi. Clayton is a homeschool senior, and I've seen this guy work. He's a hard worker. He's a window cleaning tech at Pro Wash. He loves producing and creating music. He's working towards earning his real estate license. And Clayton is the founder and CEO of the Dober Digger. Let's hear it up for Clayton. Clap one time if you live in the South. Clap two times if you know what a dirt dauber nest is. Clap three times if they're easy to remove. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit about that, but that's where I step in. My name is Clayton Rashi, and I am the CEO and founder of the Dauber Digger. If you don't know what a dirt dauber is, it is a small insect in the species of the wasp, and they thrive in our southern humid climate. These pesky problematic bugs take dirt and pack it all over our homes, making them seem dingy, dirty, and downright disgusting. Let's make this simple. A dirt dauber plus your beautiful home plus dirt equals a dirt dauber nest. Have you ever walked outside and seen a fresh dirt dauber nest on your home that you just painted a week ago? If so, you may have felt a lot like this little girl, frustrated and annoyed and wondering if there's a solution. And trust me, there is. Use my tool, the dauber digger. This state-of-the-art tool will change the game of getting everything done with removing the nest, and it'll leave it streak-free, and you'll be able to see it super nicely, and it'll be clean and pristine. It all has a three-in-one method. Scrape it, scrub it, rinse it, and it includes a universal screw-on so you could be digging them out from high places safely. Thanks to the Dauber Digger, next time you walk outside, you'll be feeling happy and rosy just like this little boy. Is there a need? Absolutely. I did a survey on over 100 people, and 81% of them said that they had dirt dauber nests on their home, and 97% of them said that they would be interested in buying a tool that did so. The estimated cost for one unit is $4.50. With my goal selling price of $12, that leaves a net profit of $7.50. In order to launch my business, I need $8,500. I'm asking $5,000 from the investors, and the additional $3,500 will be funded by my own personal savings. In conclusion, the Dauber Digger is a one-of-a-kind tool that makes outdoor cleaning just a little more easy. Will you join me with digging them out? Thank you. Great presentation. Uh, what made you develop this product? I've been in the exterior cleaning industry for five years with my dad, and we have houses that we do, and they're all over them. And we started making little tools that would help, but we never found one that was super efficient. And so we, we started making random things to help it, but now I came up with the idea to actually make a solution because there is not one. If you search a dirt dauber nest removal, all you will find is to actually buy dirt dauber nests for scientific reasons. <laughs> so Clayton, so you, okay, yes, sir. Good. Clayton I, I've tried to do this with a brush. What yes, sir. makes your brush different than my brush that doesn't work? So my brush, it's a three-step method. So the first part you want to do with a dirt dauber nest is you want to scrape it off. That takes the bulk of it off. The secondary is you want to scrub it, the remaining, the remaining debris on it. And then thirdly, you just want to rinse it off, and it'll completely remove it. I've done it for a long time, and my dad knows. So you have a prototype right now? Uh, right now, me and my dad, we have a brush and a wedge and a long pole that we use, and I'm just working on combining the three, and so right now I'm getting ready to make the prototype. And then you'll have it manufactured. Do you know, have, have you gotten that far? To yes, ma'am. I've already, I'm already looking at contacting someone, and they're in Louisiana. I want to make it Louisiana-made, American-made, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. These are all high school students from the nine parishes. Please give them a huge round of applause.
I, th I think at this point, the tough work begins. The investors um, will scoot out for about 30 minutes. Please stick around. Please enjoy the food and drink. We'll be back in 30 minutes to announce the seed funding, so we'll see you in a few. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Sorry, and thank you for your patience. I'm going to speak rather slowly, and for anyone who knows me, that is unusual. I'm speaking slowly so that Michael can have a second to get this together. Not that everyone's looking at you, Michael, but how's it working out for you? He's in the zone. He doesn't even know you're talking. Exactly. Are you ready for Julio? So thank you for your patience, and I'll turn it back over to Julio. I don't think I need it. I don't know. Am I on? Well, we've been tallying. Let's hear it one more time for the 21 business plans. It's been awesome. So uh, we've been through a lot this evening, so I'm just going to jump right into it. First of all, uh, I want to start off by uh, uh, awarding the $250 award winners uh, for this evening. And uh, they are in no particular order, iFi, uh, Butterfly Free, Pecan Concoctions, uh, Shank Golf, Spread a Little Hope, and Bison. Let's hear it up for the $250 winners. The $500 award winners this evening are Alien Head, Beautiful Balance, Crazy Cajun Confections, Mosaic Styles, and Roll Check. $500, let's hear it up. The $1,000 award winners this evening, they are Brush by Bray, Case Creations, My Professional Future, Zophir, and Zip Draw. For our next award, Dauber Digger, $2,500. Indie Play, $2,500. Stand up. <laughs> Don't have a heart attack, so calm down, calm down. Cam 3D, $3,000. Congratulations. Envy, $3,000. And now I'd like to invite uh, Provost Ms. Uh, Stacy Haney to come tell us who the national winner representative in first place is this evening. Provost. Is it on? There we go. Try that. Yes, it is. <laughs> So it is my privilege to announce the individual who will be representing YEABR at the National Saunders Pitch Competition, and that student is <laughs> Thomas O'Connor Faison. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, son. Come on in, man. I'll take your name in later. Look, we'll take a picture of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, if there are any... Uh, schools, uh, any people from schools out there. I love to talk to you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Way to 
can take the moment. <laughs> Always yeah. selling. So in, in closing, because I know it's been a long evening, there are a few things I want to remind the students about. It's always a teaching moment. Students, class continues. So we'll see you next Wednesday. Please don't leave immediately after the event. Meet us over with the investors for some photos. Um, so please don't leave immediately after. Um, and obviously, I, I want to thank everyone for attending. If you know students in 8th through 12th grade in the Nine Parish region, please, if you've been inspired, encourage them to apply at yabr.org. We're always looking for the next high school student who is interested in business and interested in creating and building. So thank you so much, and have a good evening.